morning, world, from the CNET stage in CES in Las Vegas. I'm Donald Bell. He's Paul Sloan. I'm going to I'm going to talk for you. She's Shar Tipkin, and we're kicking off the day here with your inside scoop from the biggest trade show in the world. Right now, there's a press conference underway here in the South Hall with the makers of the Pebble Watch, a Kickstarter project. So later in the day, the folks from Pebble will be here. But let's see what we can uh, listen to what they're saying right now. It's made of polycarbonate, um, so it's strong. And there's a polycarbonate lens on top protecting the display. We put a hard coat on top of this polycarbonate lens, an anti-scratch um, anti coat. The strap is a standard 22 millimeter watch strap. Um, we designed a custom strap that fits really great. All right, it's we are apologizing for the fact the, uh, um, the color does seem to be off in the stream. I don't think that's on our end here. So he's, he, he looks like he's from Avatar, but that's, that's a feature strap on there as well, um, you can do that just with a standard, a standard band. What makes it a great sports watch is that it's actually five atmospheres, it's, it's water resistant to five atmospheres. Now we mentioned this during our Kickstarter project, but we never really explained, um, or uh, when we announced it during our Kickstarter project, we didn't really get into the details. So we're proud to say that through the design process, we've been able to maintain a five atmosphere rating for Pebble. This means that it's perfect for going for a run in the rain, or swimming, or going sailing, or uh, you know, even doing the dishes if, uh, if you got to do that. Um, the Pebble, uh, it, it, uh, it really is kind of cool, because it means that you don't have to take off your watch when you're doing, you know, running around during everyday life. I, uh, I practically leave my watch on uh, quite a long time. Um, another thing that we haven't announced, is the, announced yet is the magnetic charging cable. In order to make the watch waterproof or water resistant, we had to come up with an innovative method for charging the watch. A lot of other sports and smart watches have very clunky docks or uh, cradles that involve you know, a, large, a large piece of plastic that you have to carry around um, to, to charge your watch. We've designed something a little different. It's a tiny USB cable with a, with a custom head on the end that snaps onto your pebble just like that. Um, it means that we don't have any uh, gaping holes in the side of the watch for a charge port, and it means that we can, uh, we can still maintain our water-resistant um, rating. So this is, the, uh, this is the cable. As we announced um, during our Kickstarter project, it's, uh, we've, made a, uh, we've made a very colorful watch. Um, as you, might, as you might know, we had a color option as one of the reward types on our Kickstarter project, and that involved uh, a vote um, where I think we had over 16,000 people vote um, for which color they wanted. We, uh, we ended up getting so many votes that we decided to add two extra colors on top of the original red, white, and black. We've added orange and gray to the, uh, to the pebble color gamut. Um, we spent a lot of time working on the colors because we knew that you know, that was an aesthetic element All of the right. watch. All um, right. We're going to bring it back here. We've got the, uh, the people from Pebble coming here at 11 o'clock. It sounds like we're going to be hearing a lot of the same things uh, at 11 that we're hearing right now, but we'll be able to actually show you closer uh, what he's talking about. But that's not pretty cool, though, kind of like a magnetic MagSafe charging cable for your watch of the future. Yeah, I mean, the hype and excitement around this project was just like nothing we've ever, ever seen. So they got to deliver some pretty neat stuff, right? Yeah, I hope so. Well, we'll be back with them at 11 o'clock. But there's a lot of news to catch up with that we've been seeing over the, the past day. So let's catch up with some of it here. One of the things, we talked a lot about 4K yesterday in terms of televisions. We did see yesterday, Scott Stein showed us a 4K tablet. Seems a little ridiculous. Because <laughs> um, we were talking yesterday about how 4K doesn't really make sense on screens that are smaller than maybe, you know, 80 inches. But here we're looking at a 4K tablet with a 20-inch display, 20-inch IPS LED backlit LCD. And this is being shown to us from Panasonic. So what do you guys think? Is this the future of, of tablets, both 20-inch tablets <laughs> and tablets that are 4K? You know, when I listen to Panasonic talking about this, it, it sure seemed like Panasonic trying to show the competition they can up things. But it's hard to imagine, right? Where's the content going to come from? I mean, it's 20 inches. It will look nicer than, they say, than the Mac you know, Retina display. But where's the content? It's the same problem. Right. So there's, we're, we're lacking apps that will be optimized for 4K. We're lacking, uh, yeah, apparently it takes a while for <laughs> photos to load onto, a, onto the tablet to really right. make all those pixels sing. Uh, 
And it's also, it's, <laughs> it's still a 20 inch tablet. I mean, board games would look amazing on this. Right. But I, well, I mean, Lenovo has, um, they also made, I think it was 23 inches, it's, you know, massive, and that's what they're, you know, it's kind of a, they're positioning it as almost like an all-in-one desktop right. that you can, like, lay flat and play, like, air hockey and uh, various other games on. So we've seen a few others uh, that are about this size at the show. I just think once you've, get, once you've gotten past Retina, right, <laughs> your eyes, be, uh, ability to perceive pixels... Uh, doubling that is not going to make that well, much of a difference. This is the whole argument you keep hearing against 4K, is that pe the eyes can't really tell the difference. Nice. I mean, I walked around and looked at a lot of the 4K televisions side by side, and they make them look great, and you get really close, and it looks great, but it's pretty hard to, it's pretty hard to decipher. But I love this idea, though, that 4K is kind of on this tipping point of, if consumers do get excited about it, yeah. we're going to see 4K everything. There's going to be 4K toasters. Just, you know, <laughs> anything's going to have 4K slapped onto it. But if they don't get excited about it, then it's going to be a retreat to some other feature, right? And what will it cost? I don't know. I mean, this tablet will probably be like $10,000, <laughs> you know, if it ever hits the market. Uh, speaking of features, Shar, you got to talk with Samsung yesterday about uh, this idea of maybe feature fatigue in their, yeah. their televisions. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of goes across all of Samsung's products, honestly. Um, you know, they've always been known for cramming a lot of features into products, which allows you to kind of do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. But the problem is most people just will stream Netflix. You know, they'll have, you know, 3,000 apps or, <laughs> or whatever uh, Samsung's up to now. But uh, they do very few of those. Do they have maybe like the data and statistics on how many people actually use their all the I features that have I honestly have no television. idea it's more anecdotal I think yeah. you know that I mean and you know for myself you know with like a smart TV I am basically going and watching either like Netflix or Amazon Prime or you know whatever uh, services on there not necessarily taking advantage right. of everything I mean and you see it in their phones as well they um, you know, it, basically across their entire product line I mean the refrigerators are you know tricked out with all of these amazing things you can do with them. Right. Um, it's just a matter of if you really need to. It, just, it seems like a, a trend or an idea that's at odds with everything CES is about, though, <laughs> of, of simplifying their products yeah. instead no, of I, I, adding new features. Yeah, I mean, and that is actually one of their big focuses for this year is trying to make everything simpler. So they're hiring a lot of people um, out in the valley and in their right. other design centers um, to work on the user interf interface and make it easier. Um, you know, they launched some features here that do that. Uh, their, with their smart TV, they have a new um, interface that, you know, th that's a little simpler, so it's easier to access things. Um, they're going to be launching this video, they call it a video discovery tool, they don't have it named right now, but basically from one app or one screen, you'll be able to search all of your video streaming services and live TV. Um, and they're also going to put it on their mobile devices. So you'll be in this app and you'll be like, oh, I want to watch Modern Family. Uh, where is it playing? So it'll show you if it's on live TV or it'll show you, uh, you know, if it's on maybe on Netflix, Amazon, and, you know, Blockbuster or whatever. And you can just go straight to it and, you know, watch it on your TV. Um, with, the with the tablet, you'll be able to watch it on your tablet or it'll even act as a remote. Um, you can't watch the live TV on the tablet unless you're streaming from the TV. It's but. just interesting because I feel like it's, it's something that, you know, not to bring up Apple at a non-Apple show, but I feel like it's something that that company has kind of baked into their whole philosophy for making products, and and so you expect it from them. Right, and that's just what I was going to ask, is whether you think they're doing this in, in anticipation of whatever Apple TV might or might not come out. I mean, potentially, and I think they're actually probably hiring people from Apple. You know, they said that they're you know, hiring a lot of people with expertise in this area, you know, ri from rivals. So it's a good so, time to yeah. fake Apple on your resume if you're applying <laughs> yeah, for a job. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is, you know, has been a trademark of Apple. Um, but, I, I, but, you know, for Samsung, people want a lot of those features. You know, with, with Android, you want to be able to take your gadget and make it yours. You know, you don't want to, you know, that's kind of been a criticism. Or, I, you know, the people who like Android, that's what they really like about it. Right. You know, so for Samsung, it's kind of this fine line that they kind of have to deal with where they do want to make it easier, they do want people to know how to use the different features, but they don't want to limit anyone. Right. If you put simple to use as a sticker on a box <laughs> yeah. for an Android phone, no one would buy it. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Or there's a contingent who would buy it, but the standard Android audience, I think, would run yeah. away from that. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, we'll see if maybe CES 2014 is, is billed <laughs> right. as the, the simpler future. But uh, right now, it seems like it's the 4K future. Uh, it's also apparently the future for uh, autonomous vehicles. We're seeing, we're seeing two... Ah, my computer's showing me things I don't want to see. Uh, we're seeing two 
car manufacturers talking about autonomous vehicles. Well, we're seeing many of them. Yeah, well, one, two from yesterday, though, that we wanted to talk about here. You know, the days all blur together. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, Audi showed us a self-driving vehicle um, that I feel like the the big takeaway on this one is that they've been able to shrunk down, shrunk down, shrink, shrink down <laughs> the the laser array uh, that would help you help the car be able to see where it's going. So instead of this giant right. Tesla coil looking thing on the top right. of your car. Which is what the Google car has, which makes it really fun to drive past. <laughs> right, just to terrify people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, I think they, they've shrunk it down uh, to a smaller kind of kit like looking right. array that maybe goes into the, uh, the front of the car. They're the first automaker to get a license to test these in Nevada. Of course, Google has a license, but it's not technically an automaker, so they were very careful in their language, but it's sort of a big deal. So if you want to get hit by an autonomous car Here's and get your lawsuit ready, yeah. Nevada's the place to make yeah, that happen. Well. All right. Uh, Lexus was also showing off. Now, but Lexus, however, made a big point of saying it's not an autonomous car. There was a lot of press that came up in, uh, in advance of the show last week. Um, saying that they, Lexus was going to come out and Toyota were coming out with these self-driving cars and they had their press conference to say, here's our car of the future, but it's not self-driving. Right. We still very much believe in humans, but we're putting all these lasers and sensors and we're gonna, it's all about safety, safety, safety. There might be some concern, you know, remember Toyota had that whole accelerating brake issue a few years back. Right. I think they want to be very careful to say, you know, the car will drive itself. <laughs> um, you still matter. I think yeah. that's part of the core there, but, too. But it's definitely, you know, We're not this, is, you. this is definitely a theme going on. The more tech you can pile into these cars, to, you know, into cars in general to make them park, to make them sense oncoming objects, to make them see things at night, to make them brake when you don't need them. You know, when you do, if, you're, if you're not braking fast enough, all these things are sort of getting worked into the dynamic, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm all for it. I, I feel like the time I'm the most in a rage in a car is when I'm stuck in traffic. And it sounds like that's the problem that they're solving first, is just that kind of stop and go driving, making sure you just don't hit the car in front of you right. as you're just inching forward. Um, I'm for it. I hope, I hope this arrives soon. Although I hope the money for me in my life <laughs> to buy a self-driving car arrives with it. And okay, a 4K TV. <laughs> We also, we didn't mention yesterday, NVIDIA's big reveal of their handheld gaming yep. platform. And you had some time to talk with yeah, NVIDIA. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I met with their CEO, uh, Jensen Wong, yesterday. Um, he showed me the device. It's clearly a, um, a product that he wanted to make for himself, you know, <laughs> and, and sell to uh, the public. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, I'm not a gamer, but if I was, I'm pretty sure I'd be, you know, ready to pre-order this tomorrow. It does, <laughs> seem, it does seem like one of those devices that, as excited as everyone is for kind of a novel new yeah. device, because it's a, a handheld kind of Xbox looking yeah, yeah. I mean, game it, it, controller. It feels, like, it feels like a controller, a game, game controller, and then the screen, like, opens Flips up out. out of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it's not a big screen. You know, it, it is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a relatively small but screen. It's, it's but it's an Android device. It's an Android at device. At core. Yeah. Uh, but it's... It's not something where you would buy it as like a, if you're a gamer, it would be like your phone or your tablet. It really is strictly made as like a wireless gaming. Yeah, I mean, thing. it's a wireless gaming device, but you can also access your, con you know, you can watch videos. You can, right. you can use it as your... You're not checking your email on that touch screen with a big controller hanging out. Probably not. But, but you can, the thing is, you can. Like, yeah. if you wanted to. You don't have to take, you know, if you're a gamer, you, don't, you wouldn't have to take your iPad along with you as well to just, you know, be able to access an app or... Uh, you know, whatever you want. But he's serious about making this. It's not just yeah, one of those. Yeah, he's serious. I mean, it's coming out. He said he's coming projects. out. But it plays any games, right? It plugs into your Wi Fi. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, you, you can stream from your. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this, they're, they're trying to make it so you can game wherever you are. You know, you can stream from your PC. Right. Uh, you know, there's the various gaming platforms you'll be able to um, use with it. You can also, like, stream from the device, you know, to the TV. Um, you know, he, he's really serious about, you know, cloud gaming, like letting people access their games wherever they are. Um, you know, of course, you know, the, the device they showed is just a prototype. It wasn't, right. you know, it's not, they still have some work to do, but, you know, they say second quarter, so. I think it's we'll interesting. See. I mean, uh, it's, it's this whole verticalization trend, right, in which they're making their full device, just like yeah. Microsoft starts yeah. making their own devices and doing the whole thing, and it's sort of the Apple model again of, yeah. make, of making everything from soups to nuts, and, and hence sort of maybe potentially getting in the way of comp competitors. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, that was a, a point I talked about, and what, you know, talked about uh, if, 
you know, the PC guys, you know, they're traditional partners if this is going to anger them. Right. And he said, oh, no, you know, we're not going to make a smartphone. We're not going to make a tablet. You know, we are out there to make this one specific device because we think we have something to offer here. And for, for NVIDIA, yeah, for now. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, and for What's NVIDIA, say, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and for NVIDIA, gamers are their, you know, core, yeah. yeah, their core. You know, those are the guys who are going to buy the really high-end graphics. And, you know, what it comes down to for NVIDIA is the more people that use this, the more people buy their chips. You know, the more people who use the cloud gaming, the more people are going to buy, you know, they have this new server rack that's, you know, specifically for, like optimized for gaming. Right. So and one caveat I, I think I did hear about for streaming your PCs games to the controller is that it needed to be from a computer that was using NVIDIA's graphics cards. Oh, I'm sure. And that yeah. software I'm, I'm, I'm to be sure able to like, serve yeah. up that content and then yeah. stream it over to your. And it'd still be over like a local yeah. network too. It wouldn't be like you would be playing your PCs games from work, you know, like yeah, this would be yeah, something you keep yeah. in your desk. Yeah, I mean, but you know, who know who knows what's possible in the future? You know, they're working on. You know, he said they're talking to talking to cable companies, telcos, everybody, you know, cable companies are looking at, um, you know, using their kind of like cloud gaming server system to allow people to have like an extra channel on their cable box that's gaming. Um, so then you pay like eight or nine dollars a month or something and you have a gaming channel where it's your games right. and you can access games and it's on your TV. I do feel so you like don't need a console. Microsoft has probably the best uh, set of assets already to take this thing on and yeah. nip it in the bud because they already sure. have Xbox, they have their, their Windows 8 tie-in for that and that and also as a mobile platform. Yep. They and make that, tablets now. They always have Windows yeah. Live, they have all the different streaming partners right. for that content. And honestly that the NVIDIA controller looks a lot like an Xbox <laughs> controller. <laughs> but you know, it's bold, it's fun to see companies taking chances and bringing stuff out here. Yeah, I feel like that's probably why this is getting so much attention yeah. too, is that yeah. it's something different. It's yeah. not a 4K not TV. 4K. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one was expecting this, <laughs> right. is the other thing. You know, everybody thought, oh great, we'll, you know, talk about the mobile chip at the right. show, right. you know, maybe some other surprises, but nobody was really quite expecting something like this. Sure. Uh, some other unexpected things that we saw. Uh, let's see, Tether Cell. This was an interesting one. This is a, a rechargeable battery with a Bluetooth chip built inside of it, too. <laughs> and that seems like an odd pairing of things. But the, uh, the way that it works is that it, it appifies your batteries. So if you wanted to have, put batteries in right. something and be able to control it turning on and off hmm. with your phone or your tablet, this would, this would do that. And they, in, in the article here, it mentions the idea of like killing off your kids' annoying your toys Furby. if they're going on your Furby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that you'd have a dedicated Furby turnoff app. Yeah. Uh, but also, it could, uh, it could tell you when your batteries are running low and your smoke detector, maybe, so that your, app, your right. phone would notify you that you need to change. I, I've lost enthusiasm in the story. As I'm you talking know. about it, I realize I really <laughs> don't want that. This is one of these things that. You know, we've got a lot of comments on this piece. Yeah. A lot of people saying exactly this. This is just like a solution in Looking search a of a problem. <laughs> but um, um, I don't know. You know, one commenter said, well, it, if you leave your bike in your garage and your light on your bike is still on, it'll tell you when you get upstairs. Right. You know, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, you'd have to think that this would have to be integrated in everything then. And what are the odds of that? Like, how many manufacturers yeah. are going to put this in every single product they introduce? So. Why not, though? Something <laughs> new, right? Something, Something different. All right, guys, thank you both for talking with me today.